wine is just a really fascinating kind of aspect of microbiology to study. You're, you're looking at a lot of different microorganisms together, all kind of interacting together. You're not necessarily looking at just one yeast, one bacteria. Uh, you're really looking at how they all get along together or don't get along together during a fermentation. So my name is James Osborne. I'm an associate professor here at Oregon State University and a core faculty member of the Oregon Wine Research Institute. There's a lot of different microbes, be them yeast or bacteria, that can grow during the winemaking process and can produce a variety of different aroma compounds and flavor compounds. Some of those can be quite beneficial to the wine, like uh, esters, for example, that give, can give some fairly fruity notes. On the negative side, there's also some aroma compounds that some of these yeast or bacteria could produce that may make a wine smell like, like a barnyard or a horse's stable or some things that you don't really want to be smelling in a wine. And so understanding where those compounds come from and how to control I think growth of organisms that produce those compounds is really important. So from the winemaker's point of view, the microbes that are doing the fermentation are a key component to the whole process. Without them, we wouldn't obviously get alcohol from the sugars, and of course we wouldn't get all these lovely aromas and uh, flavor compounds that they're producing. We have the Saccharomyces cerevisiae strains of yeast, and those are kind of the workhorses of the fermentation industry. In winemaking, those are the yeasts that are taking the sugars and producing alcohol. And then there's a whole host of other yeasts that can come in on the grapes or be naturally present in the winery. And we often kind of categorize those as non-Saccharomyces yeast. And those yeasts, um, some of them can produce desirable compounds and flavors and aromas, and some of them produce undesirable flavors and compounds. And so uh, one area during the winemaking process where these non-saccharomyces yeast may have quite an influence on the wine's flavor or aroma is during a, a technique that winemakers use called the cold soak. And cold soaking is just where grapes are, when, you're, when they're harvested, red grapes are processed. But instead of directly being inoculated for fermentation, those grapes are taken and chilled down in a tank and held at a cold temperature. It's thought that by soaking the grapes at a cold temperature before fermentation starts, you can soak out maybe some color compounds, maybe some tannin compounds, and kind of help improve the color or mouthfeel of a wine. Secondly, winemakers feel that doing a cold soak impacts the wine's aroma and flavor compounds. So they have a different wine at the end of the day if they do a cold soak versus not. That's what we tried to do. That's what we set up a series of experiments to investigate. In our research winery, we have these small 100 liter jacketed tanks where we can chill down uh, to the temperatures that we need. So we were able to get pin on our grapes, we were able to chill them down to about eight to nine degrees Celsius, and then we were able to perform those cold soaks just like what would be done in a winery, just on a smaller and more controlled scale so we could actually figure out what was going on. The first thing we did was uh, during harvest, we went to uh, a few wineries up in the Wyoming Valley and we sampled grape samples uh, from their tanks and they're going cold soak. We took those samples and we brought them back to the lab and we isolated uh, what yeast were in there. So we did a number of different methods to, to figure out what yeast were in there. We isolated those yeast, we identified what those yeast were. And then we used those yeast in a series of our own experiments here in our research winery. We made these little vessels that I like to think of as a giant French press to do small scale red wine fermentations where we can have a submerged cap. So inside the vessel is a plunger that we push down and it submerges the grapes below the juice and then as the fermentation occurs uh, we don't need to come back and keep punching those ferments down. The submerged cap does that for us. So we use these fermenters we made each other and then that allowed us to look at the specific contributions of, of these different yeasts uh, during a cold soak and how they may affect the final flavors and aromas of, in this case, a Pinot Noir wine. So another really important aspect of what we do here at the university and what OWRI is involved in is educating the next generation of winemakers. 
So we're teaching students all about the fundamental sciences that underpin everything that goes into making wine, and then we're training them in very practical ways to be the next winemakers to come online.